Welcome to Worlds Apart, Worlds Words Together, where our best friends share laughter, stories, and an unbreakable bond. Woo! Sorry, we're I can't here. talk today, but we're okay. We're here. No, nope. that's all that matters. Showing up you for another talking... week. <laughs> exactly. We are ready for another week. We are already huh? has a lot of downfalls this week, but it's okay. Don't say that. It's only Tuesday. I know, and it all happened today, so. It's all right. It's all right. Good thing we're all talking right. about mindset today and limiting exactly. beliefs. Exactly. Yeah. We are going to be talking about mindset and limiting beliefs, which is quite a fascinating topic, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, a topic that is very unique to every individual because our minds are beyond scientific understanding still, so... Yeah. Do you think we will ever get to the point where we will fully understand our own brain? No, because we only use like 60% of it. What is the 40% like doing? It's chilling. (laughs) (laughs) It's drinking wine every night. It's having a great old time. (laughs) Well, then imagine this, like my other 60% that should be working is also chilling. So something's going wrong here. (laughs) Well, you're just incredible. A uh, what? You're just screwed then if the 60 I am isn't screwed. It, yeah. Isn't it sixty percent that we only use or is it even less? I don't know. How much of the brain do we use? Oh. Here someone says thirty five percent. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say I think it's below fifty. I think I was wrong. Yeah. That's wow. Yeah. Come on, okay. aren't you a psychologist? You're supposed to know this. Tap why? into these brains. This is what happened with your exams, okay? You didn't use that 65%. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't. I didn't even use the 35% that I should be using. <laughs> wow. No, it's... Yeah, I, I think... I don't know if we ever will be. Because even the smartest person out there, I don't think, can be smart enough. to Even if... A person out there that uses 99% of their entire brain, which I don't think there really is. Um, I don't even think they could understand a full 100% of the brain. I think it would drive me nuts if my brain would be used 100%. Really? Because if you, I mean, if you notice how much activity there's already going on with like the 35% of the brain that we use, imagine 100% of your brain capacity in use. Baby, that's why we have so many problems because we're not using all of our brain. If we, we used all of it, it would interconnect better. True. But don't, do you think the people who have mental problems use even less than the 30, 35%? No, not necessarily. Okay. I think it's just wired differently. I think neurons fire differently in those places, but I don't think necessarily less is being used. Just sometimes different. sometimes I think physiologically there's more being used. In what situations? Like just in general or in certain situations? Like people that have um, like ADD, ADHD. Definitely some people who are on the autistics. Like there are some autistic or people who have been diagnosed with like severe autism that are extraordinarily smart. They just can't necessarily yeah. verbalize it or communicate it. Oh, oh my God. This reminds me. I, I'm watching with my parents um, Love on the Spectrum. Oh, I've heard that's good. I've watched a few episodes. Uh, it's so funny. And there's this one dude and they were like, what day was December 12th, 2003? And he's just like, Friday. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I don't even know like what year or what day my birthday was this year. And yeah. that was three months ago. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't know. So to answer your original question, no, I, I don't know if we'll ever know the potential of yeah. the human brain. Interesting. I think my brain has a lot more potential. I think everyone's brain, everyone's brain all clearly has more potential. It's just whether we use it or not. Yeah. Or care to use it. So do you think there are ways to increase the capacity of the brain that we use? Yes. There's got to be. 
This is an interesting topic to talk about. We should do an episode on this. <laughs> I, I I think there's got to be because there's um like logic learning. There's different cognitive learning capabilities out there that we can tap into that. Um, it just like the kind of like more you're exposed. It's it's kind of like that saying the the subjective saying of the more you know the more you realize you don't know it's that type of thing. Um, so then I have another question. Do you think that people? I'm sorry, I have a lot of questions today. Um, people that have like more skills, know more languages, know more facts. Do you think they have a higher capacity? Like in their brain, or do you think they just utilize it differently? Ooh, um, it depends what you're talking about. But the way my like, I'm not a neurologist, clearly, but um, the way my basic understanding of the physiological capacities of the brain is, um, they could be using more. Or they could be utilizing that area more effectively. Which okay. in turn, they're still kind of using their brain better. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. yeah, it's just, you don't necessarily have more capacity that you're using. You're just doing it in a more effective way than other people could be using their like 35%. Yeah, um, but also to be able to use that area more effectively, I think you would still have to be able to use more percent of your brain. Um, I think also that there is a certain amount of genetics involved to a degree, um, depending upon like how wavy your brain matter is. Um, because that does have a direct correlation to how healthy and how, um, like, kind of like your intellect. But like I said, I'm not a neurologist. I'm pulling basic physiology physiology out of my ass. Um, but that's kind of like from what I know, which is minuscule compared to what like <laughs> neurologist and um that whole neurology like field um but yeah i know it's quite interesting yeah you know when i was younger i thought i was gonna be a brain surgeon um uh, it didn't happen because i didn't want to be the one to kill someone so um fair kind of aborted that mission but i think You're it is interesting still. um how all of that kind of connect I think it's interesting that we use so little of our brain, yet we overstimulate our brain quite a bit in society. Um, kind of about last week, we had, we had set a we had set a line or a phrase. I don't remember who it was, but basically we were discussing the fact that um, we get overstimulated by focusing and caring about too much when in reality most of the things we care about don't matter um like who <laughs> cares if you got a brand new set of couches who cares if you live in the greatest mansion like no one cares like really like why do we care no um and like we are just caring too much and that's one of the main reasons we're getting quite overly stimulated um, and then you couple that with the fact that we only use 35% of our brain. Like, yeah, okay. I mean, think and about that. All that, all that external <laughs> stimuli just on that 35% Which, of your brain. If anyone actually ever listens to this and has a degree, like, I know that's not exactly how it works. And I'm sure <laughs> there's no exact correlation. But I'm sure the person who knows all that won't be listening to this. <laughs> probably not. Or not that great. But, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting to think about not just the physical aspects of the brain, but also those more um, abstract parts as well. Yeah. 
And that is a great way to roll into this week's topic because that has a lot to do with how you utilize your brain kind of, Mm -hmm. and, um, how you stimulate it or how you talk to yourself, which is all brain processes. Yeah. Would you like to start us off? Sure. I can start us off. So, um, first we're just kind of define a little bit of what mindset is because, that's going to lead us into that kind of limiting belief, negative um, thought type pathway. So mindsets are the set of beliefs individuals hold to be true, then influencing their attitudes, thoughts, and emotions in the face of challenges or new experiences. Yes. And to kind of why are we talking about mindsets mindsets are how you approach the world how you approach certain situations um for example we're starting off with the examples right away um today i received two failing grades meaning that i won't graduate in august but i would have to redo both of my classes in november and january And I could have, I mean, I was upset, of course, but I pretty easily made that switch of like, okay, this also provides me with different opportunities. It's not the end of the world. Um, I could have easily stayed in this negative mindset of like, I failed these classes. What am I going to do? I'm a failure. I suck at this. I suck at that. Um, But because I was able to shift that mindset, I now feel a lot more positive towards the situation. So mindsets are the building blocks of approaching life. Yes. And I like that you use that example and how you switched your mindset because a lot of times it's you hear, whether it's like YouTube, internet, whatever, friends, family, it's like, Oh, don't have negative mindset, have a positive mindset. Just like forget the negative. Like you just need to get the negativity out of your life. Only focus on the positive. <laughs> and a lot of times, like that, that's kind of like what we're almost taught, like inside. Just, just get, yeah. don't think about the negative. Like that. Why are you thinking about the negative? And I think that um, that's part of our problem. Like, <laughs> We're designed, like, there's feedback loops to get scientific with it. Um, In our body, designed to give negative feeling, negative emotion. That's how we learn. That's how we have evolved. That's literally how we came to be today. Um, So I think it's, from my perspective, and I think the perspective that we kind of talked about and kind of agreed on that, negative thoughts and negative emotions aren't necessarily bad but they are a call to action you need to like acknowledge them like acknowledge say oh i'm really pissed at myself damn i did horrible like why i feel like crap but you need to sit with that and acknowledge them accept them and then kind of like how you did those are a call to action yeah. Like when you, you acknowledge them and then you're like, okay, what am I going to do about it? How am I going to have yeah. find happiness? Exactly. Because the way, even today also, Michael told me like, we just need to move past the negative conversation. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. It's like, if you believe, if you want to believe that, I'm like, okay. Um, it's not necessarily that you want to suppress those negative thoughts or feelings. Because from those negative feelings, you realize like this needs to change or this needs to be mm-hmm. different. And for me, feeling so negative about my test, I was like, okay, but is it the end of the world? No, I can do my test next year. I will find a way to work around it, still being able to get my master's, but also start working. Mm-hmm. So it's like you said, it is a call to action. And it is okay to have those negative thoughts and have those negative feelings because that will only 
it's kind of the first step of making a change. Yeah, and I think if we want we want change, we have those call to actions with those negative feelings, emotions, experiences, whatever you want to call them. Um, and obviously, we don't want to feel negative forever because that's kind of land. Um, so if you want to, you know, fulfill those call to actions and be happy, like our our version of happiness revolves around can we solve call to actions? Because you feel confident, you feel um, like you've accomplished something, you feel worth, you feel all these positive because you overcame a negative call to action. So it's kind of counterintuitive to just completely ignore those negatives, mindsets or emotions or whatever it might be. And you can really only do that when you have the mindset to do that. If like my mom, she always, when I'm upset or angry, she's always like, what can I do to make you happy? And I'm like, you just got to let me be pissed for a day or two and I'll be fine. Like, I know if I'm upset about something or really pissed off, like you give me a day or two, I'll just say, I'm always a little extra dramatic. I'm like, this is the end of the world. I'm not good for anything. So I get super dramatic about it. But then after a day or two, I'm like, oh, well, it's happened. We're going to move past it. But it's very easy to stay stuck in that. I suck at this. I don't feel worthy. I So just a bunch of negative feelings that you're not able to move past. And that has yeah. really to do with the mindset. Yeah, and it's it's like that mindset also of not just towards shifting, but that, I mean, I, I, nah. it's the mindset of shifting. You have to be able to look at those challenges in a mindset of an opportunity, a call to action to get better, to change something, to do something, because that's how you get unstuck. If you're just sitting in a pity party and going, oh, ah. Uh, for me, for me, for me, um, you're never going to really get anywhere. No. You're going to stay and stuck. But that mindset you can shift of kind of apply. Up. Sorry. No, you're good. You're Sorry. Good. I, I thought you were, you were finished. No, you kind of froze. <laughs> oh. Um, I was going to say, like, you can apply this to basically anything. Mm hmm. 100%. Because Mike, Michael today, he was like, I am so unmotivated for school. I don't even want to start. I'm like, okay, that's a good mindset to have. You can also think of it like I have eight more weeks of school. Then Keep I will down. be done for the rest of my life. <laughs> so you can either stay stuck in that I don't want to do this and get a lower grade than you actually can because you're being lazy and you're glued to your phone. Or you can have that mindset of, if I do this well, I graduate and I get to move past this. And then you feel a lot more accomplished. I had a good, good switch of mindset yesterday because I was running and I had seven minutes left and every, every inch of my body was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. Stop. But I was like, nope keep going, keep going. And I did it. And I felt amazing afterwards. Yeah, you can tell that to my shins. Hunter and I have decided every Sunday, we go run around Crave Core, which is like 2.6 miles. Oh, God, that's a lot. So the first time we did it two weeks ago, it was so beautiful out. Perfect spring weather. I was dying. I really hate I was like, how can I be a distance athlete for like almost 20 years and I've taken one year off and I feel like an oompa loompa trying to run Mm -hmm. and oh it hurt so we did the 3.6 in like 58 minutes two weeks ago wow and that's so slow (laughs) it's like walking pace but I was running don't matter um, and then this past weekend we went and it was the opposite. It was cold and so windy and we were running into the wind. 
Oh. And I almost, I just wanted to, like, I was like, Hunter, I can't do this. Like, I just want to stop. And then I was like, Leah, no, you can't finish this. You have finished way worse swimming sets. You can get your ass yeah. around this lake. And so we did. We finished it. And we finished it six minutes faster than the first week. Wow. We did it Look in, like, 50, we did it in like 52 minutes. Um, my shins are killing me right now, though. Um, but, yeah, it's just retraining that mindset. And, like, yeah. you know, I told myself, like, look, I've gone through way worse than swimming. Like, all yeah. the stairs that Jason made me run. Oh, my uh, God. Or any like anything. Like, I can make it around this lake. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. Especially, like, the first few minutes, I was like, this kind of sucks. Not going to lie. And then I was like, well, of course. Like, swimming wasn't fun the first 15 minutes either. It's just warming up. Mm-hmm. And, um... I did. I do have a little bit of a split to like build that endurance, because if I just start running, like I, I will give up easily. I have to. Build That's why it. I have Hunter because he. I have to run like two steps for every one of his, and yeah. somehow he never lost his distance track abilities from high school. So this little man prances around the lake, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> dying but you're also very small compared to him that's what i'm saying but anyway but it it, it is that mindset shift because you know i could have just given up and said screw this i'll see you on the other side or whatever but one i know i need to do some uh, exercise um keep my heart pumping um but also, I thought about all those other training sessions or whatever that were way harder than making mm-hmm. it around the lake in an hour. Um, and yeah. I was like, you, you can do this. Like, just, just get it done. So um, does this mean that you're now also part of the Retired Swimmers Run Club? Absolutely not. No. Nope. No. Mm-hmm. No, nope, because I will Damn. not be doing that every day. Mm-mm. You don't have to do it every day. I don't do it every day either. It's uh, just uh, retired maybe. summers. <laughs> fine. That's fine. It's just whenever you feel like it. No. The I really retired wish, summers who start running. I really wish I could get my rowing machine and like my indoor one because I used to do that during COVID every morning. And I got fit. I was just like, I got fit fast. Yeah, I mean, rowing is very good. But I just, anyway, I'm not built. But the reason I brought that up is one, it showed my mindset shift, but also, yeah, it was kind of like an on the spot goal. And goal setting or setting little accomplishments is a good way to learn to shift your mindset. And like me saying, yeah. Um, my goal was to finish because I've done harder stuff. Like that was still a goal that I thought, like Leah, no. And throughout that run, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna stop running until I get to this bridge, and then I'll have a walk. Or I'm yeah. not gonna, and that's how I made it around because there was, yeah, I was not just gonna go for fun. I had to have <laughs> little goals to get me yeah. to the end, and that helped me. Um, change that perspective of that mindset. It helped me to realize, okay, this is not something I necessarily love to do. I'm feeling some negative emotions about this, <laughs> but um, I'm going to change it into a positive, or I'm going to shift into more of a positive um, mindset and accomplish something that I find hard. So I think... I don't think we wrote about it in our blog, but what I think really fits in well with this self-belief and maybe negative thoughts and feelings is daring to step out of your comfort zone. Yes. Because stepping out of your comfort zone shows you like, oh, I, I can actually do this. For me, the reason why I started running is because... I didn't run until I got to Lindenwood. So I never ran in my entire life until I was 17 years old. And then I had to run. And then I got 
you know, fit because of swimming and stuff. So I was able to do it. But then after swimming, my cardio just went downhill really fast. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, I'm going to start running. It's something that you've always hated. It's something that you've always been bad at. Let's get out of this comfort zone and put your body through something that is pushing you. Yeah. And it's not going to be fun, but it will prove to yourself that you can actually do these things and you can put push yourself to get through these stupid runs. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a good way to to put it because um you have to not every negative thing that you experience the your call to action could put you out of that comfort zone and the more times you are in that comfort or the more times you're out of that comfort zone and you take that step you kind of get used to it in a way you will create a new comfort zone yeah you're no you you do create your own your new kind of comfort zone because you have showed yourself but it's also kind of like learning through doing so the more times you step out of that comfort zone the less you're likely to be afraid to take a step out of the comfort zone because you learned previously okay this scared me then i did the scary thing and i'm okay so when the next scary thing comes around you're not as intimidated totally totally and that is just something very human, I think, where yeah. I mean, we're you always to want to get, yeah, and also, but also to want to get better yeah. a lot of the times. I, I feel like we as humans always want something more. That's why technology keeps evolving because it isn't enough. It's never enough. We always need more. Um, we keep building more buildings because we don't have enough buildings already. Um, and that's the same with working on yourself. If I compare myself to five years ago, I'm an entirely different person, but I don't think in a negative way, but still, I don't feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be yet. And I feel like that is something you will continuously feel as you grow older, where at some point when you're on your deathbed, you're like, I feel accomplished and it's the it's the stages of development um yeah. where we always want to develop and adjust ourselves to the time of our lives that we're in um so right now we're doing more adult stuff because we're getting to that point where we're adulting and then in a few years we get more of the like family stuff we have challenges when it comes to raising a family and we have challenges to keep a job and a home life, like stuff like that. So, and that those are new comfort zones that we have to step out of. Yeah. And I think it's kind of just in the mindset as well as that these challenges, these is comfort zone circles are not roadblocks. Um, if anything, they are stepping stones to lead you to the next thing. In our blog, we gave an example that for some people, journaling might be a good way to get those thoughts in order, um, to also kind of understand what is going through your mind and it can help you maybe find certain patterns of like, oh, whenever this happens, I feel this way. And then by understanding those patterns, you are better equipped to deal with future scenarios in that way. Yeah, I um, think it understanding, like I think we said way back at the beginning of understanding limiting belief is to understand the negative emotions or challenges or situations and writing down hundred percent. It, it's people done it for years. It helps process, helps the brain process while you're having them. 
Um, but it also can give you more of a, uh, a greater insight into understanding the root cause or what's real, the root challenge. And you can answer your call to action a little bit better because you are addressing the root negativity. And <laughs> we, we will forever, and I especially will forever bring this up. Everybody is individually different. Like I've tried just writing down my thoughts and for me journaling in that way doesn't necessarily help. Um, what does help for me is writing down like things that I need to do. So I'm more organized, mm -hmm. but I've always found that really writing down my feelings and thoughts, it doesn't work for me. Um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work for you either. And the same as with every other part of self growth and self awareness, you have different qualities that make you, you, and it requires different ways of going about it. Basically. Yeah. Everyone's different. Um, the main like thing though, is no matter how you get out of it or how you train your mindset, to be able to shift when faced with adversity, like all those tools are going to be unique to you. Um, but yeah. you can't, you have to use those. You have to find them. You have to utilize them because the worst thing you can do is sit for days and hours and months and years in this degrading negative pool of, um, mindset challenge emotion when there is so many tools that you can use to shift that and accept yeah. those things that need to be changed um, because once you change something like you know me getting a new job like I don't like the job I'm really I don't really like the job I'm at I know that that's a call to action. I need to get a new job. Um, I've applied to jobs. I've been get offered jobs, the ones I actually enjoy, and that I will take them. And that's that call to action changed. But now that I'm happy, this new happy challenge, like this new area of happiness, brings its own unique challenges. Um, yeah. You know, new people, new kind of new new way of working a new demographic like all these things are things that I have to overcome so challenges never go away and it's important to realize that challenges never go away the way that we stay happy when facing or you know happy uh confident um is the way we actually process these challenges and that mindset towards those challenges yeah. um, is kind of like the biggest way to leave that circle of doom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what might also help is just to, you know, if you face a challenge and you're not sure what steps to take or the action to take, talking to someone can always mm -hmm. help and just be like, Hey, I'm struggling with this. What is your perspective on it? Mm -hmm. um, if you have close friends, I think having that open communication is very important and being able to stay objective towards that situation can also be very helpful because we tend as people to have this tunnel vision of like, well, I'm, I want to get here, for example, like I have this specific goal and the only way that I want to get to this goal is by doing this, but that's not always how it works. So being open-minded to that and being objective, objective to other people's perspective and be like, Hey, this might also help you or looking at it from this way might help you. And, um, so you have journaling that you can help that can help you uh, talking to people can help you. And then mostly people that you feel comfortable sharing those things with. 
Um, do you have any other suggestions that might help with that process a little bit? I think research and not in like academia research necessarily, but if you have a goal in mind or if you have something in mind that you want to do, there is 99% of the time, there's not one way to do something. And if you feel no. like there's not an established pathway that suits you, make your own. There is nothing yeah. wrong with going outside the box and forming your own pathway to get to where you want to go that will make you happy. Exactly. Yes, there will be challenges and negative thoughts and things to overcome. There but always will don't be. be afraid. Don't stay in that mindset shift that mindset, accept the challenges and create your own path. What I think ties into that is, um, comparing yourself with others doesn't always help with that. I know of a lot of people, Michael is one of them who likes to compare themselves to others. And it's like, but when they were 23 years old, they already had this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, fair, but you are also in a very different situation. Everybody walks their own path in life and comparing yourself to others won't always make you feel good because they might be way more successful in your eyes, even though they're really not. They're just in a different stage of their life. And like Leah said, creating your own path, what it is that you like to do, what makes you happy and what helps you to overcome and to shift those negative thoughts I think is helpful yeah I think I mean we can do a whole episode on why comparing yourself to others is so <laughs> detrimental so we can I'm not definitely do that <laughs> to go down that rabbit hole but it is something that is in our nature um it's become more read readily easily done due to Social media, Social media, technology, um, whatever you want to say. Um, and that readily availableness, that ability to just pick up your phone and be like, ha, oh, she's got six pack abs. Oh my gosh, she got her PhD. Oh my gosh, she's a president or she's a CEO. Uh, that doesn't help you. Um, it's good to say, oh, I might be interested in that, but the path that that person took is most likely not going to be the path that you take because we no. all have different backgrounds. We all have different experiences. We all process things differently. We all learn things differently. Um, so it's kind of good as a research tool to see what's out there, what is helping others, but ultimately you got to find what works for you. I think that is beautifully said. <laughs> I'm such a weird smart. Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> you didn't even use ChatGPT for it? <laughs> no, no ChatGPT. <laughs> wow, congratulations. No, but it is true because you are you, they're them. And everybody has their own set of skills that make them special i guess in their own way um and it isn't a bad thing and that's like one of the things that for example a lot of parents they're like well i want my son or daughter to become a doctor because i've been a doctor if they don't want to do that then as a parent you should let them explore what it is that they want to do and yeah. it's the same here it's like if you notice that you're on a path that you're not necessarily enjoy take a turn do something else explore what it is that you like to do and does that mean like you don't have to s stick with the same job for 35 years especially if you don't like it do something that you enjoy if it doesn't make you as much money don't matter because you're a lot happier in that position than you were before yeah so just finding whatever suits you and being in that environment that allows you to overcome 
those challenges and negative beliefs, I think will help you get a lot farther in life. For sure. For sure. I, I totally agree. Um, yeah, I just be you, be you and be you happy. Just don't get in trouble. Yeah. And on that note too, like not every day is rainbows and butterflies mm -hmm. and sunshine and all good. Like for us too, like we say all these things, but do we always adhere to it? No, probably not. <laughs> Because we have our own negative beliefs and self-doubts and shitty days. Um, and with anything else, this is just kind of, if on a general basis you are able to maintain those things, you will already feel a lot different. So yeah. I think that's what I want to add to say. it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Mark, because... over and out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> no, because it is very easy to portray that, especially on podcasts and social media. It's very easy to portray this image of like, oh, you should listen to us because we always do the right thing, which it's just not true. No one, if, if you, anyone tells you they do something right or they have their life put together to an, every every day of every year, every second of it, they're lying. There they're is lying. No way. It's impossible. Everyone's going to have their bad days. Everyone's going to feel shitty. Everyone's going to feel lonely, worthless for just, you know, even if it's just a few hours, everybody feels like that every now and then. It's, and that's okay. Because that means that you are being called to, for action. Yes. Boom. Full there surf. you go. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Second mic drop. Exactly. Hold on. I'm going I'm to drop my mic. Oh, God. That was not as very um, social media worthy as the you ones know? you see by the celebrities. Come on. <laughs> well, I am not a celebrity, so... <laughs> take that <laughs> yeah but on that note um if you have any negative beliefs or self-doubts don't be afraid to reach out to us and maybe we can share some other insights or tips to get you going i guess um yeah we're, we're always liked... willing to share what we've done yeah we yeah, have lived because we've through made much. many mistakes. <laughs> lived through much, so we got plenty yeah. to share. Exactly, and even we haven't figured it all out at all. So, don't be afraid to reach out. And if you like this episode, please leave us a nice comment or a like, or share it with somebody else who might um, enjoy listening to this episode as well. For next week, we have. Again, um, a guest planned for you guys, for that one person listening to this. We have a guest, and um, we won't share who it is just yet, but just be be aware it's the Olympic season, so we're going to talk to a Olympian. That's all I share. And we're going to tie in the self-growth and the self-awareness part um, as well to stay on track of what we're trying to share with you. Anything you would like to add on to that or? No, I think you no. summed it up quite nicely. Oh, thank you very much. I, I did a little bit of practice. No, oh. I did not. I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but um, on that note, we would like to thank you for joining us as we offer a glimpse into the world of true friendship, where even though worlds may seem apart, the connection remains strong. And see you next week. Bye. Bye.